Hey, thank you, welcome. I'm Charlotte Smith with Three Cow Marketing and I have this great interview today with Nick Burton who owns uh, Victory Garden Farm in Paris, Texas. And I'm really excited to have him here today. And Nick and I met in San Diego when we were both speaking about marketing at a conference there. And so once I found out what he does, it's so different than many of you farmers here uh, in the, that I get to network with that I thought it would be really interesting. He has a lot of really great ideas and things that we can all learn from. So, hey, Nick, welcome. Thank you for being here today, taking the time and tell us who you are and where we can find you online. I know I could find you in, in multiple places, but like maybe the two or three main places we can find you online. Sure. Well, thanks for having me. It's been it's a, it's a pleasure. It's, it's been fun working with you over the last few months. Um, on Facebook, if you want to look at the farm and see the actual day-to-day -day activities that we post up, it's Paris Victory Gardens, and uh, it's it looks like a little salad bowl. That, that'll be the icon you're looking for. Uh, we're on Instagram on stateofthesoil.com. That's not really where I do my farming stuff. That's just more the Nick Burton within the agricultural community uh, deal. And then on Twitter, I'm on VG, VG Lunch. And then I also have another website uh, called stateofthesoil.com. Cool, great. So can you tell briefly like your elevator speech, what is Victory Garden? And it's the it's also Victory Lunch Club. What What is Correct. that? So Victory Lunch Club is Victory Gardens product. We, we only do two products. We go to the market with added value products, and then we, we have Victory Lunch Club. And the way all this works is we're a protected culture farm only, which means we're in greenhouses, we're in an indoor grow room, and then we're in a high tunnel. And different quick difference between a high tunnel and a greenhouse. Uh, greenhouse, I have more env environmental controls. Uh, it's a little bit more insulated. Where the high tunnel is just like a hoop house. It's got a single layer, and it's more for seasonal crops. And we use that to grow in ground. So we're doing carrots, um, some tomatoes, uh, a lot of herbs are in there. That, that's that's where the main ingredients for the herbs comes from. And in the greenhouse, I only do uh, tomatoes and then basil, basil on the side. In the indoor grow room, I grow. Uh, with NFT hydroponic channels where we grow leafy greens, uh, specialty herbs, and then I, I have a test area for a new product that will be coming out the first of the year. We take all of that, harvest it, and I try to use as many other local farmers as I can, and I also have to get uh, service from a food delivery truck um, as far as like like we're using an outside source for some of these ingredients because what we really are is a scratch kitchen. So we grow everything from seed. Uh, my general rule of thumb is I don't put anything out unless it's 80% grown on my farm. So the other 20% I'm really, really selective on. And we have a commercial kitchen on site. Victory Lunch Club sells salads, like five-star artisan salads, every single week. We rarely, rarely repeat the recipe. I mean... I think after almost two years, we want to repeat it like five recipes a couple of times. And we put out a different lunch every single week based off uh, raw vegetables. And, and some meats, some protein packs, uh, we can get into the add-on stuff and how that works and how we expand it later on. But uh, it, it's just basically a scratch kitchen. We just happen to grow most of what we put out. And then for the farmer's market, we're doing hummus. Uh, pesto, um, tomato sauce. We, we make our own tomato sauce from scratch, and we're doing one-pot meals and stuffed bell peppers and uh, wraps and things like that. Okay. So I, you can't buy just a vegetable for me. How about that? Well, I was going to – so that was my other question is when you – because I never heard your story how you started out. Did you ever want to sell vegetables, or did you go into this knowing that you wanted to sell prepackaged salads? I completely – fell into farming by just this the oddest mistake. It wasn't it wasn't a mistake. We uh, I have a property maintenance company that that is still in operation, and I always I knew I couldn't do that forever physically, and so my goal was to have a nursery. I was like that environment. Uh, the, the nursery season here is only for a couple of months, and I thought, well, we'll just you know we'll focus on the vegetable gardeners in the area because that's what the other nurseries were not doing. 
uh, it was also a good way to supply my property management company with ornamentals. So we got we started buying wholesale and things like that. So it, it was a good funnel for my other company. And uh, because everybody associated me with long and garden care anyway, the nursery was an easy transition. So as we were, as we were doing the build out for the nursery, as a novelty to to the retail establishment, just as a little side piece, I ordered a 48-hole hydroponic system just to have in the corner, just to play with and, and mess around. Um, but the other thing was we, we took care of so many um, restaurants in our lawn care that I knew all these restaurant owners. Oh, and you can God. see very easily how the conversation was going to get steered with, hey, what if we could grow vegetables? Uh, within two weeks of ordering a hydroponic table, we went from 48 holes of production to 600 holes. And two weeks after that, we went from 600 holes to about 1,800 holes of production. And then we converted the greenhouse that I ordered to house all of our tropical plants. Uh, we turned that into our tomato facility. And then two years after that, we built the 30 by 96 hot tunnel. Um, it evolved. And right. then yeah. the very first year that, that we had the retail operation, it was great. The weather was perfect. Um, we used all the same marketing tactics that we used for everything else, and we had a killer year. And then the second and third year, it started raining in February, and it didn't quit raining until July. So I missed the first two, the next two seasons, like completely. It was, it was literally a washout. So I lost about three hundred sixty thousand dollars within those two years, staffing, you know, all this inventory, and then having to get rid of inventory. I mean, it's, it was just a mess. And the only thing that was working was we were selling uh, produce the first year, so people already kind of knew that that we had that. We were selling to some of the restaurants at a, at a wholesale level, and very quickly. I realized that I got real bored just growing lettuce. Mm -hmm. And I, was, I wanted to start growing all these other things just because I get bored easy. And growing those other things, and one thing you have to understand is I love food and I am I cook a lot, like a lot, a lot, and always experimenting. And that led to we started making these little salad packs. And we initially started the salads. I, I put two honor system um refrigerators i put one in a crossfit gym right where people are you know eating a lot of vegetables they're very careful about what they put in their body and then we put another one in the mainstream gym and we kind of did that for i want to say six to eight months and everything was going really well and then sales quit just it just kind of dwindled off but it really just fell off a cliff uh, very quickly and what i figured and what i asked and, and we we come to to learn was because that refrigerator was always there, it kind of became part of the background of the gym. And well, I, I'll get it tomorrow. They were visually seeing it, and they were visually ingesting these salads, but they quit buying after a while because, well, it's just always going to be there kind of thing. The other thing that happened is we decided to shut down the nursery and convert all that nursery infrastructure into growing more and having a little bit of outside uh, places. We brought in some beehives and some natural habitat and that kind of thing. And of course now people weren't coming out to buy our salads because people were picking up our salads in addition to picking up their ornamentals and this and that and the other. Uh, we're a little bit outside of town by a couple of miles and you know that couple of miles that's a barrier for some people to, to, to buy from you if, you're, if you don't have anything special. So we asked a lot of people, we did a lot of testing, and basically we removed all the barriers by which people were saying, this is why we can't come out and buy from you. So we built a product around the clients that were already kind of buying from us, and then we attracted more by, by making this product. So the way Victory, and that, that product became Victory Lunch Club, and the way it works is you sign up once. I don't have an opt-out form for the salad club. So once you sign up once, it's one click, and it's like your name, address, the name of the business, how many salads do you want, and credit card information. We don't do any special orders. The only thing we'll do is we'll substitute a traditional garden salad, just kind of plain Jane salad, if we're because we do like some oddball salads. You know, some you know some people just may not like beets, or some people may not like whatever we're harvesting that particular week. So we have to grow a lot of, of different varieties, which I enjoy the challenge of it. So once they sign up, 
They're in the system, and they are going to get a salad every single Wednesday, irregardless of what happens, unless they happen to opt out. And the way it works is every Monday morning, I send an email to my list. And if, if you go to uh, Paris Victory Gardens on the Facebook page, you'll always see on Mondays when that pops up. We use a lot of humor, and it, well, I'm, I'm very dry in my humor, so I think it's hysterical. And, and other people, they either get it or they, or they don't kind of thing. But uh, when, when we put it out, they have the option of there, – there's really no option. It's just, hey, this is what's going to come. Yeah. And then they can go, I'm going to be on vacation. Um, I've got to go out of town for a business meeting, or, or I let me substitute the garden salad. I would say out of 150 that we do a week with the deliveries, only about three or four opt into the garden salad. The craziest statistic of, of mine, we talk about you know click-throughs and, and all that stuff uh, a lot with your course, but on, only 48% of the people – from week to week, open their emails, which means more than half of the people never look to see what's going to come on Wednesday. Yeah, they just have, get there. They we, trust you. I mean, that's the ultimate trust. Yeah, so we have like a 93, 94% retention rate for these people. So if you're on, I mean, it's, most people never get off, and it's it's startling to me. And this, I mean, you got, you have to understand the mentality of the town that I live in. It's, it's small town, Texas, it's meat and potatoes. It's, it's not a very vegetable driven place. So we only sell, I like all my marketing is directed to very, very, very specific customer avatar, which we've all gone over in, in your course. Uh, I've, I've just been doing it for a long time and I know who's, who's going to buy. So that's how I spend $12 a week on ads. And it's and sometimes, <laughs> and sometimes they don't even do that. So give us you a know. little brief idea of your customer. I know it's a woman, obviously. <laughs> and, it, and what else? It is, it is a woman. Uh, she has graduated college. She does work in a professional atmosphere. I mean, remember, I only sell to offices. And ask me about that here in a minute. Okay. Um, and ask me about why Wednesday also, because that's that's another key thing. Gotcha. So she, she has weight insecurities. She's not necessarily overweight. But it's a it's enough of a yo yo diet kind of trend that that just knowing that she's going to get a salad every week, she's busy. She she absolutely has at least two kids. Um, her husband works outside of the house. I mean, it's these are busy people with a little bit of discretionary income that know the value of eating correctly, but don't necessarily. They will tell you that they want to eat local. But at the end of the day, it has to taste great. So we, we there's there's some things that, that I have to do, which I, for about eight months, we never put ranch dressing on anything. And I, just, I couldn't do it. I just, I, I don't, that's not the kind of salads that we do. We make our own, we make all of our own dressings. So all of our, all of our dressings are made in house. So we finally started making a, a couple of different recipes for ranch and, and, and then our sales increased and our, our opt outs the very few that we had quit opting out because we were satisfying. Hey, I'm still eating the salad, but I'm on, I'm still getting that taste. And and we then started listening to our customers, even though there was a lot of vegetable protein in there, in their minds, I've got to have meat. I've got to have meat. So then we started to add on sales with the protein packs. Now, I'm, I'm not a, a poultry farmer. I don't have any living animals on the farm. Um, they didn't care. They didn't care where the chicken came from. So I, I, I went to the distributor where I get, I get my packaging through this distributor, right? Instead of having to order bulk from another place, we just get it from one of these food service uh, providers. And we went to the facility, and I tasted grilled chicken that was pre cooked already. Because remember, we're a raw kitchen, mm -hmm. and and I said, look, this chicken is not from us. This is this is what it is. I'm, I am getting this stuff frozen, but if this is what you want, this is what we'll provide. Nobody cared, yeah. but we we knew to ask and to at least give them the option because if we didn't provide it, that's what they were going to do anyway. Yeah. So we might as well be the one to to buy it and sell it and continue that tradition of convenience. I really don't sell salads. I don't sell produce. I sell the convenience and the taste of the whole thing. Uh, they don't have to worry about prepping their meals. Um, I, I see trends throughout the year, right? I mean, January we get we. This is the neat thing about our signups. So our biggest spike comes in January, but it's not at the first of the year. It's usually around February 1st. It's at the end. And the reason is 
they have all the intentions in the world of going into January and they're going to eat healthy and they're going to do better. And then by week three, this sucks. I hate <laughs> having to go to the store and prep my meals. And by Wednesday, I'm tired of eating whatever I, I made all day Sunday. And this just this is hard. I don't want to do it anymore. Because they're busy people. Right. So we we get all these sign ups in February, and, and we we now know, given the three year, the two year history of this, fixing going to three years. We know when these spikes are going to occur. We know that around um, the end of August, when school starts back up, we're going to get a spike when the teachers come. We know in June we're going to get a decrease because the teachers aren't working anymore. And again, we only sell the offices. So it's an up and down thing. But when the teachers go back to school, our farmers market starts up. So it's you know it's it's great. It's a perfect transition. Yeah. Um, so one thing I want to point out is how amazing what you just described is you have listened listened a hundred percent to what your customer wants and everything you do is geared towards her period. It's none of what Nick wants to slip in there to you know I want him to like this. You I mean would you agree that you, it's oh, completely yeah. and, customer driven? And, and see, I'm the deal with my food is I'm. I'm as concerned with it being aesthetically pleasing as it is fresh and paired correctly. I, I, I want it to taste great, but what's more important to me is, is that the dressing pairs and matches the salad. So them getting these experiences that you can't get anywhere in Paris. And a lot of these people, they haven't gone to a four- or five-star restaurant. I mean, these, these people have lived their entire lives without treating themselves to the, the event of going to a a great restaurant yeah. and that's something I really like to do so I know how rewarding that is to yeah. go have that so I tried to deliver that type of experience to the to the desk every single week yeah well, um, it sounds fantastic it, so it is a little bit what I want to do but knowing why they're sticking with this and knowing what they want really really helps and then like you said that trust factor they never they never question whether it's going to be great or not and some weeks we go way off the rails. I mean, we'll put some we'll put some crazy stuff out there just to kind of. I almost want to push them out of their comfort zone a little bit, and then when we do, that's when I get the email. I, when when something's overall great, I don't get emails about it. But when I go when I, when we when we push the barrier and, and somebody says I've never had candied beets before or smoked beets because we'll smoke our own vegetables and put them in into a dressing. I've never had that before, and I didn't think I liked it. And I loved it. That, that's when we start getting emails, and that's when it gets real fun. Yeah. Now, um, how did you, because you said people can't drive in off the street and buy a salad. How did you get into these corporations in the first place? What, what connections did you have, or was it all connection-based? Uh, a lot of what we do is, is you know, tapping into our network. There, there's three strategies that we employ. Number one, let's say, let's say you and Hayden worked in an office, and you didn't want the salad. Hayden did and somebody else was the boss. The boss doesn't want to be bothered with this. He doesn't care what goes on. So if it's a small company, I'm only marketing to you and Hayden. Hayden just chooses to be a part of it. So it's an individual transaction between, between me and that individual in the office. So I'm not charging the office, I'm charging the, the individual. And so I guess I didn't finish, you know, Monday you get the email, Monday and Tuesday, we harvest and make the salads. Wednesday, we deliver. And then Wednesday night, their credit cards automatically charged. So the other key thing is we're getting weekly revenue stream from a premium price. Mind you, these, these salads are $13. And most of the time, whenever I, I talk live in front of people, I mean, you kind of you kind of saw that whenever we were in San Diego, how much are these salads? They're, t they're $13. And even people in California were like, damn. You know, it's, you know, it's, kind of, it's kind of off. They don't know what to do. Uh, because I always there's no way people buy those for thirteen dollars. Like, go check our way. I mean, I, I have social proof, have years of social proof through Facebook. You can go through and look. Yeah. Um, and it's it's because people value the convenience and the quality of it. We're and giving it, that level of service. Yeah, and it's a big salad. Didn't you say it's like two to three servings, so you could share it or have two days in a row or something? Absolutely. But the thing that that has been the most difficult to press on to people 
is that it is a two to three serving salad. So whenever we do get those testimonials back, we make sure we highlight those because a lot of people go, I don't, I don't want to pay thirteen dollars for salads. Well, you're actually paying, you know, thirteen dollars for at least a salad and a half, if not two days worth of, worth of eating. And, and some people tell us they're getting three. That's almost an irrelevant selling point because people don't pick up on it. It's one of those things they're either going to buy the product because it serves their needs so well or they're not. And price is really irrelevant. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's what we all find. I, I, as farmers, that's what we try to get people, especially our students, to get to is when you offer them those things and you put words to it that meet their values and their beliefs and all, price isn't an object anymore. So that's, And I really want to impress on people, you can't project your own price perceptions onto your product. So if you, like like for me, tomatoes are almost worthless because i got hundreds of them coming out at one t any one time. So a tomato is nothing, but I can't go to market. And let's say I was selling tomatoes. I can't go, I'll take 10 cents for this tomato. It's, no. I mean, you got to think about all the infrastructure and time, germination and pruning, that, that everything that went to that tomato and know that this tomato is probably worth 10 times what I'm selling it to you, but I'm going to do you a favor and sell you at a premium price kind of thing. And you can't be arrogant about it, and you, and you can't be – but you have to really value what you're selling and take a lot of pride in it, and that will transfer over to, to their belief of what it's going to buy. Yeah. And, and, and then from that point, people are going to buy from you or not. It's just getting that right product in front of the right person with the right message. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so you told me to ask you, why Wednesday? So – when we were considering what we were doing, we, we tested the program, right? We Nowadays, I, I test everything before we release it. And as we were going through tests, we did find out that the people that were still taking care of their own meals to some extent, well, they already had Monday and Tuesday pre-done on, on Sunday. So the people that were health conscious enough to prepare their own meals – Monday and Tuesday was already covered. And Mondays, working in an office, is just crazy anyway because everybody's coming back. Everybody's trying to get back into it. And Fridays, we found that most people go out to eat with their coworkers on Friday. Or they'll have staff meetings and they'll bring something in. And Thursdays was just psychologically not working for people. But Wednesday was like, you're halfway through. There's something I did for myself. Somebody servicing me on Wednesday. It's like... It's that hump day gift that they give to themselves. Mm -hmm. Also, from a production standpoint, I don't have to have my staff worry about having to work Saturday and Sunday. It's we work. I, I'm one of the only farms that all my employees work Monday through Friday and come in roughly at seven thirty eight and get to leave by three or four. It so it's like it's a regular job for. And nowadays, I don't get to work on the farm, but <laughs> two or three hours a week. But um, my employees get to come in, have a regular job, have a regular life, they get to see their families at night, they get to take the weekends off. I go up there on the weekends and do the watering and the and just checking in on the systems, but even that just takes me an hour a day. So we systematize the entire grow operation. So we're not I almost don't consider us a farm where we produce produce. We're we're a manufacturing facility that just happens to grow pots and vegetables. Yeah. Uh yeah, it sounds really sustainable too. Um, so, do you think? Would you say you're profitable after the two to yeah. three years? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're our first year of full time farming. We we did six figures. Oh. So that's that's kind of what started my speaking career and the consulting is is the people that we bought all this equipment from. We just kept expanding it. It kept expanding. We're ordering more grow down the 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 stuff that we start. Our, our seeds in and they saw us going through all of the consumable material and they're like what what are you doing that you know nobody goes through this much stuff their first year and I told them what they're doing or what I was doing and, and they asked me to speak once and then that kind of turned into yeah. a whole nother fifth or sixth career however many I'm on I know yeah well you're that multi-passionate entrepreneur <laughs> doing all kinds yeah. of things um so your your business model would you would you ever expand to have these I mean I know you're doing consulting now would you ever expand to have salads in you know 50 states or are you happy with what you're doing right now 150 salads a week or do you see that growing or is it just a nice little what it is for you right now I've been here's the deal I've been approached multiple times by people that wanted to franchise this 
uh, we went down that rabbit hole pretty far. Um, whenever you, like our profit margins are pretty pretty good. I mean, selling what if you're growing your own stuff and you're preparing it in house and selling it at a premium price, your profit margins are going to be there. So as we were attracting investors, I just I was not comfortable. It it takes somebody that's passionate about food. It takes somebody that can grow these things, and it takes somebody that almost has a year-round facility like mine that's you know protected environment inside grow rooms that kind of thing. Uh, I mean, most people north of here, I mean, would have a really hard time doing that kind of production. So it takes a really niche person to pull something like this off. Other people could definitely do added value, and I see it all the time. And that's that's mainly what I work with people on but I was the other thing the big turnoff for me was if we were to franchise this out and if we were to build these we would have to we would have to go into communities and hire non-farmers that didn't appeal to me I wanted I, I want to help farmers I don't want to help people have a job that doesn't that doesn't excite me uh, the other thing that doesn't excite me is well we'll just go after farmers and, and sell them the business model the problem I had with franchising is they would lose their farm name. And that sounds so silly to investors. I don't want to, I don't want these farmers to give up their farm name. Because you gotta understand some of these people are third generation farmers and the farm has been Smith Family Farm for you know three or four generations. I we can't take that away from them. It, and I've never found a way I get more joy in helping farmers one to one bringing their own version of this to market. Yeah, so, okay, speaking of that, so we have, um, on my audience here, we've got like 4,000 people. A lot of them grow vegetables. Is Are there like one or two or three things you could tell them that, okay, if you're growing vegetables and you want to do a little bit of what you're doing right now, I mean, to me, okay, I'm not a vegetable farmer. I have animals, so it's different, but it sounds like, all right, so I'm going to bring someone in. I'm going to license my kitchen and I'm going to make up some salads and make a lot more profit. Is it that easy? <laughs> or... it, it, it depends on, it depends on the kind of person they are, you know, right. can they handle mentally all the stuff that, that would go into running multiple lines at the same time. So, uh, uh, farmers have been doing this forever. They just haven't called it added value product and they haven't charged accordingly. So the difference between us and somebody that let's say, Hey, we have cucumbers left over from market. What's the next thing? Let's make pickles. We have leftover. We have leftover uh, strawberries or berries. We'll, we'll make jam, and we can continue the process. They can make salsas and take this that that leftover product or the uglies and and continue on with the season. Okay, that that's been added value, and that's been going on forever. Right. You know, the difference is I set it up for today's marketplace. The only way to get on is to sign up online. The only way to get on is to set up a subscription service. And even though I removed all the barriers, there's all these rules in place. No, we're not going to make, we're, we don't do substitutions. We don't, you know, we're not going to take cucumbers off your salad because I know that if we go to deliver it, I'm going to deliver the wrong box. I mean, it's just, there's, there's too many. I take all of the questions out of there. Does this person get this? Nope. A every week, boom, everybody gets the same salad. You know, we can keep up with one completely different salad, like the garden salad, but a bunch of individual. I don't want croutons. Can I get extra this? It's you're getting this or you're not right. kind of thing. Yeah. Your your cards automatically going to get charged. I don't have to go chase the money. I don't have to send out bills and stamps and invoices and keep up with who's paid and who's not paid. Either the credit card runs or it doesn't. If the credit card doesn't run, they get a very nice click and paste email. Hey, you need to update your card. Most we we don't have troubles with it, and if they don't update the card after a couple of weeks, we will cut them off. I mean, it's we're not out anything. You it's know not I mean? worth twelve bucks to keep emailing them. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but but here's the other thing: the people that we target, their credit card somewhere else. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so we we eliminate that hassle either, either way. So can this be done? Absolutely. It, Another big thing that happens whenever I talk to people about what we do is I don't want to have a commercial kitchen. That's a big expense. We have to get all these licenses, licenses and permits. And yes, it's going to vary from state to state. And some states are a little more difficult than others. But here's the thing: if you can sell your crops for three, four, five times what you're able to get if you just sell a head of lettuce, 
why would you not make that investment? That's what I'm my, thinking. Yeah, yeah. You know, my kitchen is if when people do come out to Paris, Texas, they have to at least come from Dallas. They're coming two hours out of the middle of the sticks. And they get to my place and I'm like this is tiny. I said I tried to tell you it was tiny before you came. I mean, we're 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 less than five thousand square feet of grow production. We're just because we're because of how we grow, we're just able to churn out a lot. But our kitchen is 12 foot by 14 foot. But I designed that kitchen just to make salads, right? So, I mean, it's, it's just, again, it's a manufacturing process. We take the salads, we triple rinse it, we put it in a bin, we make our salad mixes, we have all these contraptions and Vitamixes and, and things to make the pestos and, and chop very quickly all, these, all this produce. And we set it up on an assembly line. We make all the salads, we box the salads, we label them into the refrigerator, and we're done. Yeah. We don't have to all over the place. It, it's, a, it's a small, small operation. And when we make salads, we make salads. When we make hummus, we make hummus. When we make pesto, we make pesto. We're not trampling all over ourselves. Yeah, it's super efficient. You know, uh, what comes to mind is we have a, a lot of the states have a cottage food law. So in Oregon, we can sell up to twenty five or $20,000 of things without having a licensed kitchen if I think 75 to 80 percent of it was grown on the farm. So this could be value at, you know, someone's already doing a CSA and they could add this in there without a lot of investment. Just, man, you know, 12 by 14 foot area to put your salads together is not that big a deal. Yeah. And, and we've already proven out with a couple of my students how easy it is and how, how little you do have to invest. Mm -hmm. So. Um, they're they're taking some of our recipes and, and interjecting that into their own CSAs into their own markets and even into uh, some grocery stores up in Illinois. Mm -hmm. So um, now I get to see, you know, my little baby turning into something else on somebody else's farm, and I, I, I'm just so thrilled for them because they're. I mean, it's made a big difference in some of them for some of them, oh, and, and it, yeah. it's not that much of an investment. Yeah. And and I, and the other thing, people just seem to freak out about it. and I, where are we going to get packaging how do we package this where we you just you just look at you know half a dozen packaging places and pick one sure <laughs> yeah yep. it just you make a decision you know it's it's people get so hung up on the little details yeah. that the my clients could care less what this stuff is packaged in my my only concern is do they fit efficiency efficiently within our coolers and are they strong enough to survive transport yeah you know and how do you deliver them? Do you have to rent a refrigerated car? Or you just do it in del in coolers in your own vehicle. Nothing special there. No, no. I, we actually got a van, and I I took it to a um, an RV place for a guy that we mow for, and they cut a hole in the roof, and they properly you know put a put a, a refrigerator unit on the back. So we do have refrigeration going into the van, but we still keep it in coolers. Like I'm the best person to buy food from because I'm so food safety conscious. Because when I get, I, I get food poisoning real easily, and like if I get it, I'm like down for a week kind of thing. So like I'm, I make sure everything's super chilled out. So yeah, good. So it sounds like one of the really big keys to success. I mean, is so many things you mentioned: connections, leveraging all that. But the 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 CSA model, the repeat, they're automatically charged every week. Yeah, we got to it got to the point where. If somebody had to, if I had to describe in one sense what we do, it's a modified CSA. Yeah. It's all it. Yeah. It's a modified automatic CSA. And just uh, for my knowledge, and I know someone will ask when they uh, watch this too, what system do you do use? What are you running their charges through? What, what are you setting that up through? I, we, we had PayPal forever. We just switched over to Square. Um, I, I'll tell you, nobody knows this yet, and you're, gonna, you're the first person to know it. Uh, we have an app coming out. Oh, cool. And this, this thing is sick. I mean, it was, it's, it was expensive to, to develop, but instead of sending emails, we're going to be we're going to have push notifications to the phone. So they're going to download the app for free, and every Monday, ding, their phone goes off, and it's this is the salad of the week. Yes, I want the chicken add-on. Yes, I want the snack pack add-on because we do we do other add-ons yep. to this thing. So they can right there go. I'll be on vacation. Update my card. Add the chicken, add the add the whatever we have. They can manage their whole thing by their phone. We're we're actually going to get away from the email marketing because because we're going into text marketing. We're still going to do email marketing for client buildup, but once that client's in our system, this this app 
because I used to have to, to maintain this whole list off of a, off of like a spreadsheet, yeah. which was forever. This app, we custom did this thing, so it's going to do it for us. So once they make the change, it automatically goes into the database. And instead of me going this change, this change, this change, I go export, print, and we're done. This thing is going to save me like five hours a week. So is that now, an app that, um, like, I, I listening to you, it's something I could use for my milk customers. Is this going to be available to anyone, or is it just your own app for your it, business? It, it was custom built for me by, by one of my tech people. Yeah. And, you know, when you do something that custom, it, it is pretty expensive. But I look, I look long term. This is, this is not only going to retain more clients, but remember, we have add-ons that people have to read an email to look at. If they get text and they can go in one push, do the add-on, it's going to pay for itself without question. It's already going to pay for itself, saving me, a, I mean, a lot of time. Yeah. From dealing with these I'm like way excited about this. Well, and it also seems like one of the best marketing things you have going on is people are sitting next to other people eating your salad saying, hey, where'd you get that? Do you find that most of your business now comes from that kind of referral in the office? Absolutely. So so when we first started playing with, we'll do delivery. This is before VLC. This, hey, we'll deliver to you if you order. And we had a dollar amount. People would call and say, man, we can't get enough people in the office to do this. And I was like, and, you know, and we'd go ahead and do it at the time because we we're trying to build the, the, the business up. But now we will deliver. This Remember I asked you earlier, you asked me about why we do offices. Number one, there's always somebody at the office. If we deliver to homes, they may not be there. The other thing about delivering to offices is where we're at, there's these main thoroughfares, right, that, that have all the businesses. So instead of going up and down through neighborhoods and alleyways and all this stuff, we go down one street of commerce, down another street of commerce, we go around the loop of Paris, and then we hit the other two. It's, I mean, we really deliver on mainly four or five streets. Um, could you do this in New York? Absolutely. You just have to you have to bundle it up somehow. Yeah. I mean, you, you really have to regionalize where you're at. And that's another thing that I was a little sketchy about when we're, you know, we started looking at franchising out and man, we almost pulled the trigger on it on the, on the franchise, but I just, my heart went in it kind of thing. Sure, I just didn't yes. want to do it. And, and I didn't want to give up any equity in, in the company I have. Uh, so, um, the other thing about the offices is we, we then, when we first started out, yes, we'll only deliver one to an office. We will go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and take care of you because we knew that as soon as we got this thing in front of other people, and sure enough, there's we still have some onesies, twosies kind of here or there, but a lot of these places are three, four, six. We deliver 12 to one place, so it's, it's pretty slick. Yeah, uh, that sounds amazing. You know, and back to your idea of where you started with the CrossFit gyms and stuff, because we have... I have several students who delivered CrossFit gyms. Maybe you could do that, but just make it more um, scarce, you know, build scarcity into it, like have your fridge at the CrossFit gym. I mean, could you see that maybe like every, so, every, or yeah, go ahead. So, so we try to make that a part of our delivery route and only deliver on Wednesdays, but it was, it, it just, it still got to be not worth it. Yeah. I mean, sure. it just, because VLC took off, servicing these two other things that really wasn't generating enough. Because we, a lot of those people just moved away from the gym and were buying it through VLC anyway. Oh, gotcha. Uh, two other real interesting points. Uh, one of the things we didn't talk about is how we got to some of the bigger places. So I, I realized that we were going to have to sell management. Okay, so we have a we have a lot of uh, secured places like manufacturing plants around here, and you have to go through security and this that and the other. And it was it was it wasn't going to be worth that level of stop for one or two people. Mm -hmm. So most of these larger companies have a wellness director. Mm -hmm. So we would contact the wellness director. You usually find somebody within the company. Hey, can you give us a warm introduction? We got the warm introduction. We had the meeting. It's like, look, here's what we're going to provide for your employees. They're not going to be leaving for lunch. They're not going to be eating out of the vending machine. We're going to be feeding them something healthy. You're never going to have to worry about us billing or any trouble whatsoever. All we need is access to the break room. So we we explain to you know these directors and the bosses and the managers how much better it was going to be for them if their employees are going to be eating better. So instead of us 
direct marketing to all these different employees, the manager was sending out our sales letter, and they're going to open up the, the email from the manager. So that that was the other thing that we did when we first started is we would we uh, had an outside salesperson that was going to these places and setting up a mini display. And and everything we do, everything we do is remote. So we all of our iPads have uh, wireless uh, internet service. We're taking iPads, and we'd have a sign up special at these places. So boom, 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 and we got them. So that that was a very um, that was a good way to get a lot of people all at one shot, only emailing to one person. You may email one person, and she's sending one email on your behalf, and the management is supporting it. I mean, that was yeah, that had to be a, a good open rate right there kind of thing. Yeah, that's fantastic. All that you're doing to leverage your connections and getting out there and meeting with people, which you're a great people person. So I'm, you know, it comes easier for you than a lot of farmers, I would suspect, or I know because I hear from yeah. them. So yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Well, look, that's a learned trait. I mean, it, the more you do it, the easier it is. Exactly. That's what I tell them. Right off the top of my head, I can think of about 20 things I'm going to pull out of this interview and put on a list, you know, great things yeah. you've mentioned here. But anything else? And also, um, do you teach people? I mean, I know you have the, the course we briefly talked about. Do you teach people how to do just this? Just just VLC? Yeah. Do you have a course coming out or is that part of the course? Well, that, that that's basically what, what MAP is. I mean, it's okay. how, how we did this. Is 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 step by step is, is how we did it. Now, if they choose to do a salad subscription, that's that's up to them. That's their choice. Or if they choose to sell honey in a gift basket, that's their choice. You know kind of thing. So we, you know, I, like I said, we, what I just told you, everybody, they could go attempt it, but Map makes all those connections really. Great. And Map is the course you teach. Yeah, okay. minimum, it's minimum agricultural product. Perfect. Okay, awesome. Okay, well, this has been really fantastic. I've, I've learned a lot, and, and I see so many opportunities for, just like you said, not just salads, but how can we take just half of what you mentioned in here and utilize that on our farms we already got going on? So. <laughs> uh, it's, and look, it's, it's the right product for the right person with the right message, yep. and that's, that's any agricultural product. Yep. Milk, dairy, Poultry, yeah, all, all the stuff that, that your group is kind of uh, more centric towards. But it, it could be beekeepers. It could be cut flower producers. I mean, it, it could be shoes. It could be anything. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it, if it works, it works. Yeah, yeah. No, this is fantastic. Well, I want to thank you for being here. You have such a generous heart. Every time I talk to you, you're like, you'll, you'll share everything. And I appreciate that because that's – that's the only attitude to have. You know, it helps everybody yeah. and it helps you. It helps all of us in the end when you help other people. So thanks for sharing oh. all this yeah. fantastic yeah. information. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll let everyone know how to look you up if they want to also. But thank you for everything today. I appreciate it. And this was Nick Burton and the, with the Victory Lunch Club and Victory Gardens Farm. And uh, your contact info will be in there too. So thank you, Nick. Thank you. Have a good day. You too.